pick up on our top story once more. In 2019, the SA Human Rights Commission investigated the Hamanskral water situation and found it unsafe to drink. Then again, in 2021, the HRC found wastewater treatment plants in this area were not working properly and polluting nearby rivers. Well, I'm joined now by Zamantungwa Mbeki, Acting Gauteng Provincial Manager for the SAHRC. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. If we look back at the attempted interventions by the Human Rights Commission, it seems you were largely ignored. Is that correct? To some extent, um, if because if they had listened to us, we wouldn't be here. Though in the last couple of years, there have been some movements from the city of Tswane and the Department of uh, Water um, and Sanitation, it's clearly not enough because we find ourselves where we are today. Yeah, absolutely. So your first intervention, was that in 2019? Yes, that was the, we held an inquiry um, looking at the um, situation in Hamad Skral, the looking at the situation in Royval and how it impacted the water quality um, in the area and the, as well as the wastewater treatment uh, systems that are available, noting that some of those um, uh, facilities are actually not working and some of them are actually not being attained. Um, uh, though that being um, maintained. And as a result, we find ourselves where we are today. Hmm. Did you follow up on your report when, when you realised not much was being done? The Commission has been following up on this report uh, since we issued it in 2021. We actually had a meeting with the City of Tuana just as recent as in April, uh, where we were following up on the action plan that the City of Tuana had been given to us. Let me put it right, uh, it's a draft action plan. Mm -hmm. And what we wanted as the Commission was a commitment from both the City of Tuana, the Department of um, the Department as well, and a commitment on the budget. Um, the estimations that we got uh, were in the billions, um, and we were for informed that it would require close to nine billion um, in order to sort out the problems in Hammond Skral and as far as they relate to Royval um, and the treatment systems in the area. Now we were looking at budget commitments from both the department and the city of Tuane and those we had not received to date. Of course, we know that the water problems in this area predate by many years your intervention. Um, what is your understanding of why the proper action hasn't been taken? Is it lack of political will? Is it political squabbling? Because we have seen uh, at, at a certain point, I think it was in 2021, then Premier David Makura and the water minister promising a new water pipeline, which I don't think ever happened, um, but also wanting to take control of the matter at a national point. And the mayor at the time, the DA's Randall Williams, apparently saying no. So is it a money issue? Is it a political territorial issue? Is it a lack of interest issue? It could be all of the above, Sally, uh, because the main thing when we talk about these type of issues is that if we discuss them, without having a budget commitment to them, they, they are futile. So even if the Premier at the time had made a commitment and the City of Tuana, for whatever reason, had rejected that commitment, from his department, he should have indicated that this is the amount of money that he was going to be spending from a provincial government aspect to address this issue. Because it's not just a municipal problem. There's also a national and provincial stakeholders who are involved in this problem. So if the Premier had made a commitment, it needed to come with a commitment um, with money behind it. Same with the city and same with the department. And from our end as the commission is that if any of these plans that are currently being at, being put underway, that any of the, uh, the departments and the municipality are referring to, we need to have an undertaking that the budgets that are going to be discussed and tabled are going to actually commit to this particular issue. Well, Otherwise, we're going to find ourselves here at the end of the year. Yeah. It's, it's going to be an ongoing problem. When you hear that 15 people have died, we don't know where they got cholera, possibly from the tap water, but it may well be simply from living in an area that has intermittent water supply, uh, and that's how it got out of control, because clearly there's a problem with the wa Royval water treatment plant sending sewage, untreated sewage, into the Arpis River and other rivers, and also into the dam where the water is drawn from 
to drink. But when you hear that people have died after you flag this problem, how do you feel? Uh, I don't know if it's for us to feel, uh, but I think as a country, we should feel both disappointed and actually um, call on the state to actually, after, after what has happened now, for them to actually commit um, and have these plans sent to the commission, sent to the different institutions so that we can actually monitor them. Um, I feel sometimes as a country, we are shocked too often. But after mm -hmm. the shock has died down and we've moved on two weeks uh, from now to another story, um, we would have, there's nothing that we would have said has come up um, from what is currently going on. The people of Hamanskral will still face the problems that they've been facing. And this is not the first outbreak. And what we need to, uh, what we need is that, uh, is to make sure that we don't find ourselves here again. So all of the departments who are now making these commitments, we need to hold them accountable to those uh, commitments. And we need to have those commitments tabled so that we can minute, uh, monitor them as the commission and then also make sure that they actually an allocated a budget that can be used to address this issue because we are going to find ourselves here mm. unless we have those commitments. Apart from publicity, talking about it from the HRC putting together a report, how do we hold the people responsible for fixing this to account actually? Because there doesn't seem to be a consequence. It's a very difficult one, Sal, when we talk about consequence when we've the families that are sitting without um, their loved ones. Mm -hmm. It's both a, as you said earlier on, it's about, about the political will to actually address all of these issues and also to, um, to some extent, contribute this to the turbulence um, in the different and respective municipalities. If we don't have um, municipalities that are run cohesively with a stable government, you find that things are going to consistently be slipping um, and falling through the crack. Um, this is not the only issue that's falling through the crack. We've got the Val River issue falling through the crack. We've got um, different issues with the Alexandra sh uh, shutdown, for instance, falling through the crack. And those are all linked to municipalities that are not necessarily stable. And when we have these un, um, unstable municipalities, we run the risk of having such issues falling through the uh, falling through the crack and not being adequately budgeted for. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for speaking to us this evening. Much appreciate your time, Zamantungwa Mbeki, acting Gauteng Provincial Manager for the Human Rights Commission. Well,